we meet. Honorable Speaker, sir, the circular economy transition is expected to help in productivity enhancement as well as creating large opportunities for new businesses and jobs. The action plans for 10 sectors such as electronic waste, end-of-life vehicles, used oil waste, toxic and hazardous industrial waste are already ready. The focus will now be on addressing important cross-cutting issues of infrastructure, reverse logistics, technology upgradation, and integration with informal sector. This will be supported by active public policies covering regulations, extended producers' responsibilities, framework, and innovation facilities. 5 to 7 percent biomass pellets will be co-fired in thermal power plants resulting in carbon dioxide savings of 38 MMT annually. This will also provide extra income to farmers and job opportunities to locals and help avoid stubble burning in agricultural fields. Saving energy is an important aspect of the energy management. Hence, energy efficiency and savings measures will be promoted. This will be done in large commercial buildings through the energy service company business model. It will facilitate capacity building and awareness for energy audits, performance contracts, and common measurement of and verification protocol. Four pilot projects for coal gasification and conversion of coal into chemicals required for the industry will be set up to evolve technical and financial viability. The policies and required legislative changes to promote agroforestry and private forestry will be brought in. In addition, financial support will be provided to farmers belonging to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes who want to take up agroforestry. Honorable Speaker, I now move to the fourth priority, financing of investments. Capital investment holds the key to speedy and sustainable economic revival and consolidation through its multiplier effect. Capital investment also helps in creating employment opportunities, induced enhanced demand for manufactured input from large industries and MSMEs, services from professionals, and help farmers through better agri infrastructure. The economy has shown strong resilience to come out of the effects of the pandemic with high growth. However, we need to sustain that level to make up for the setback of 2020-2021. As outlined in Para 5 earlier, the virtuous cycle of investment requires public investment to crowd in private investment. At this stage, private investments seem to require that support to rise to their potential and to the needs of the economy. Public investment must continue to take the lead and pump prime the private investment and demand in 2022-23. Considering the above imperative, the outlay for capital expenditure in the union budget is once again being stepped up sharply by 35.4% from 5.54 lakh crore in the current year to 7.50 lakh crores in 22-23. This has increased to more uh, more than 2.2 times the expenditure of 2019-20. This outlay in 22-23 will be 2.9% of the GDP. Effective capital expenditure with this investment taken together with the provision made for creation of capital assets through grants and aids 
through grants and aid to states, the effective capital expenditure of the central government is estimated at 10.68 lakh crores in 22-23, which will be about 4.1% of the GDP. Green bonds. As a part of the government's overall market borrowings in 22-23, sovereign green bonds will be issued for mobilizing resources for green infrastructure. The proceeds will be deployed in public sector projects, which help in reducing the carbon intensity of the economy. <coughs> Gift IFSC, world-class foreign universities and institutions will be allowed in the Gift city to offer courses in the financial management, fintech, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics free from domestic regulations, except those by the IFSCA to facilitate availability of high-end human resources for financial services and technology. And International Arbitration Center will be set up in the gift city for timely settlement of disputes under international jurisprudence. Sev services services for global capital for sustainable and climate finance in the country will be facilitated in the gift city infrastructure status data centers and energy storage systems including dense charging infrastructure and grid scale battery systems will be included in the harmonized list of infrastructure this will facilitate credit availability for digital infrastructure and clean energy storage. Venture capital and private equity invested more than 5.5 lakh crores last year, facilitating one of the largest startup and gro startup growth system. Scaling up this investment requires a holistic examination of regulatory and other frictions. An expert committee will be set up to examine and suggest appropriate measures. Government-backed funds, NIIF and SIDB, Fund of Funds, have provided scale capital, creating a multiplier effect. For encouraging important sunrise sectors, such as climate action, deep tech, digital economy, pharma, and agri-tech, the government will pro promote these thematic funds for blended finance, with the government's share being limited to 20%, and the funds being managed by private fund managers. For financing this infra, uh, the infrastructure needs, the stepping up of public investment will need to be complemented by private capital at a significant scale. Measures will be taken to enhance financial viability of projects, including PPP, with technical and knowledge assistance from multilateral agencies. Enhancing financial viability shall also be obtained by adopting global best practices, innovative ways of financing, and balanced risk allocation. Digital rupee. 